To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. So friends, we are done with two interesting topics that is about introduction to customs duty and we are also done with another interesting topic called classification under customs and I'm pretty sure we guys have got some great clarity on the introduction topic and of course on also on the classification topic my dear friends. Now let's move forward to discussion about the third topic which I want to discuss with you that is a topic called baggage, stores and postal goods. I repeat one more time. We are going to talk about the concept of baggage, stores and postal goods. Now this is one such topic which is extremely wonderful and important which you will actually enjoy a lot because it's very practical where we need to learn about interesting points in baggage and of course we will also discuss about what are the limits of exemption we have got in this topic of baggage. Now let me give a small example to give you an introduction to this topic. Sir let's say there is one person called Mr. Prakash. What is the person name? Mr. Prakash. Now Mr. Prakash is an Indian resident. He is basically from India. He is of Indian origin only. He is a person belonging to India itself. But one fine day he thought he will go for foreign country. He wanted to go for vacation to Singapore. He wanted to go for a 10 days trip to Singapore along with his entire family. Prakash, his wife and two children. Four of them decided to go for Singapore for a trip. So 10 days they left India, went to Singapore, enjoyed in Singapore, had a lot of fun and they came back to India. But while coming back to India, they came with some articles. They came with some articles because Prakash or Mrs. Prakash or their children would have purchased some items in Singapore. So basically what is happening now, foreign goods are brought into India by the people who went outside India. Sir, first fundamental point, when we are in India and we get the goods from foreign country, we call it as import. Yes or not? Yes, we call it as import. Now here is a case where Prakash, his wife and two children, four of them went for a trip or vacation or entertainment to where? Singapore. So they enjoyed in Singapore and while coming back to India, they came along with some articles. Now question is all about on that articles what are brought to India, should Prakash pay duty? Should Prakash pay duty? That is what is the interesting point we are talking. How much articles are exempt? How much articles are dutiable? Now it's so very common that lot of our friends, relatives, cousins who go abroad for doing studies or for doing job while coming back to India, they come with many articles. Example, they might come back to India with cell phone or cameras or laptops. We are all fascinated to get lot of foreign articles into India. And they tell imported, I brought from Singapore, I brought from Dubai. So like that people start getting excited for foreign products. Now let me give an example, sir. Generally, when people keep going to Dubai, while coming back from Dubai, lot of people come back with gold articles. Now it's not that gold is cheap in Dubai, but the quality of the gold articles what you find in Dubai are much more superior compared to the gold articles in India. In fact, let me tell you, when Shivateja went to Dubai also, while coming back to India, I came back with some gold articles. I came back with a gold chain and a gold ring. Now on that gold chain, gold ring, did I pay duty or not? We'll talk about it. Other words, my dear friends, we are going to talk about a fantastic topic called baggage. Now let me tell you an interesting point that if I'll make you recollect, my dear friends, that customs duty is on import or export of goods. Correct or not? And we all know that section 222 defines what is goods, which clearly says goods includes what? Number one. Vessels, aircraft, vehicle. Number two, stores. Number three, baggage. Number four, currency and negotiable instruments. Number five, any other kind of movable property. So this clearly indicates to us that baggage is covered in definition of goods. Now in local language, what is baggage? Baggage is nothing but the luggage what you are carrying from foreign country to India. This is a local language. But if you write an exam, luggage, one mark also will not come. The word should not be luggage. The word should be baggage. 
And now let me tell you, my dear friends, section 2, clause 3. Section 2, clause 3 defines what is the meaning of baggage, which clearly says that baggage includes unaccompanied baggage. Baggage includes what, sir? Unaccompanied baggage, but does not include motor vehicles. Friends, what is that line I just told? Baggage includes unaccompanied baggage, but does not include motor vehicle. So by this point, you have to understand that a motor vehicle cannot be considered in the definition of baggage. But baggage can also includes unaccompanied baggage. That means what? Baggage can be accompanied baggage. Baggage can be unaccompanied baggage. Now, what is the meaning of this word called unaccompanied baggage? Let me explain that to you, sir. Sir, as I told you very clearly, when Prakash went to foreign country, that is to Singapore, while coming back to India, he got some articles along with him to India. Prakash got some articles along with him to India that is called as accompanied baggage. What do you call that, my dear friends? We call it as accompanied baggage. But let's say Prakash is in Singapore only and while coming back to India, he came back just like that. And all the articles are in Singapore itself. And he told somebody in Singapore, some courier agency in Singapore to send that to India. Other words, the baggage is not coming along with Prakash. The baggage might come to India before Prakash is coming to India or after Prakash is coming to India. But the baggage is not coming along with Prakash. When the baggage is not coming along with the passenger, we call it as unaccompanied baggage. The so name only says unaccompanied baggage. Accompanied baggage is that baggage which is coming along with the passenger. And the baggage which is not coming along with the passenger is regarded as unaccompanied baggage. So friends, 2-3 defines baggage which clearly says that baggage includes unaccompanied baggage but does not include motor vehicle. That is the interesting definition for what is baggage. I'm sure we got clarity on this. Now let me tell you very clearly friends that law has specified that the concept or the provisions of baggage is dealt by section 77 to 81. The concept of baggage is dealt from which sections my dear friends? Section 77 to section 81. Now first I'll explain what is 77, 78, 79. Then we'll discuss lot of baggage related rules. Then we'll also talk about 80 and 81 also. In that particular order, we will do the discussion and complete this concept of baggage. Now the first thing let me explain my dear friends. The first section in baggage is section 77. Now what is the story of section 77? Now one point I'll ask you friends. Think very properly and tell me the answer. Listen. Sir, when Prakash went to Singapore, while he's coming back to India, he is carrying some goods along with him. Maybe he purchased a cell phone or a camera or a TV or different articles he would have purchased and is coming back to India. Now question is, how will customs department know what articles he purchased and what articles is bringing into India? Now you will tell very easily, sir, they'll start checking every person who is coming to India, every luggage office, every bag office, every trunk office will check so that customs department will get to know. I agree to your point. I totally admit your point that customs department will check every person. I agree. But apart from that, what government has done is that whenever any passenger is coming from foreign country, that's nothing but whenever we talk about an international flight. What flight? An international flight. In other words, a flight is coming from foreign country or a person may come by land route also or a person may come by vessel also, a ship. Correct? He can come by ship or he can come by vehicle or he might come by aircraft also. Now interesting point is that whenever the aircraft is about to land in India, every passenger in the flight is given one form and that form is called baggage declaration form. What form we call it as? We call it as baggage declaration form and that form is given to the every passenger. And that passenger should disclose the details of the articles brought by him from foreign country. He will specify there what all articles he brought from foreign country. Now you will get one doubt, sir, what if he does not mention? What if he does not mention? 
obviously already i told you that every passenger who has come to india they'll do a screening of that passenger check all his articles all his goods and in the airport generally we find two channels in the international terminal we find two channels for every passenger coming into india the two channels are called as red channel and green channel now this channel means not some star plus or something like that this channel basically means there are two metal detectors there are two metal detectors one has got red sticker one has got green sticker that's why it's called red channel and green channel please don't think that you will have red carpet green carpet no it's only a red channel green channel now what is the significance of that red channel green channel sir these are all practical things i'm telling you in your syllabus you don't have this word called red channel green channel but for your knowledge i'm telling this point please listen listen please now what is the interesting point is that if a passenger is coming to india and he is carrying some dutiable articles with him if a passenger is coming to india and he is carrying some dutiable articles with him then he must pass through red channel if a passenger is coming to india he is carrying some dutiable articles he has to go through red channel and if a passenger is coming to india and he is not carrying any dutiable articles he has to go through green channel now you will ask sir how will we know sir how will a passenger know sir how will a passenger know whether he should pay duty or not that doubt will come in your brain i know that so for that my dear friends the answer is very clear that whenever a passenger is coming into india when the flight is about to land in india as i told you very clearly they give a form called baggage declaration form in the front side of that baggage form we will fill all the details name of the passenger passport number what all articles they are bringing and back side of the baggage declaration form they give the details as to what are the articles which are dutiable and what is the limit of exemption and generally we have got exemption of 50000 rupees i will talk that in detail don't worry but generally we have got exemption of 50000 50000 rupees that means if you carry articles more than 50000 rupees on excess of 50000 you should pay the duty how will you pay what you will pay we'll talk in detail don't worry wonderful so what i am trying to tell you is that section 77 specifies that every passenger coming to india in an international flight is required to fill a form called baggage declaration form and that form will act as a basis for the purpose of calculation of duty and anyways every passenger they'll check but this is one such form in which the importer i mean to say the passenger will fill all the details of the articles brought by him from the foreign country getting clarity right fantastic now let me tell you another interesting point here there is one flight there is one flight which is coming from australia which is coming from where australia but the flight is basically going from australia to hyderabad to mumbai hyderabad is in telangana state mumbai is in maharashtra so flight basically started from australia and it is going to land in mumbai but before mumbai first it will land in hyderabad in hyderabad some passengers will get down and some new passengers might get into flight in hyderabad and then the flight will go from hyderabad to mumbai correct right so the final destination of that flight is basically from australia to mumbai but in between it will stop once at hyderabad in hyderabad some passengers will get down and some new passengers who are traveling to mumbai might get in now my question to you is in mumbai the flight will stop and all the passengers will get down the flight correct or not now in that passengers who are coming out of the flight there are some passengers who have come from australia and there are some passengers who have just entered that flight in hyderabad and they are getting down only in mumbai so there are some passengers who performed a domestic journey but in what flight international flight so there are some passengers who performed a domestic journey but in international flight so cbic that is central board of indirect taxes and customs let me repeat one more time cbic that is central board of indirect taxes and customs they have very clearly clarified that 
a domestic passenger who is boarding an international flight a passenger who is performing a domestic journey in international flight is not required to fill baggage declaration form because the concept of baggage declaration form is only for international passenger so passengers who are performing a journey in the domestic leg passengers who are performing journey in the domestic leg of international flight are not required to fill baggage declaration form that is the story of this beautiful section called section 77 which clearly says that every international passenger should fill a form called baggage declaration form however passengers who are performing domestic journey in international flight are not required to file baggage declaration form let me talk about the next section my dear friends that is section 78 now 78 clearly says the rate of duty the rate of duty and the value shall be considered on the date of declaration that means this baggage declaration form is very important on the date of declaration whatever is the rate of duty and on the date of declaration only they will do the valuation so 78 says the rate of duty and the value shall be considered as on the date of declaration and let me tell you an interesting point in general the rate of duty for baggage is 35 percent plus 10 percent social welfare surcharge now don't tell me 35 plus 10 sir 45 sir no sir 10 percent is the social welfare surcharge 10 percent is on duty that is 10 percent is on 35 percent that is why we always say the effective rate of duty on baggage is 35 percent plus 10 percent social welfare surcharge coming to 38.5 percent so rate of duty and value shall be considered on the date of declaration now friends one point i'll tell you sir i'll give an example here think properly and tell me the answer sir listen sir let's say there is one person called mr x what is the person name mr x this a mr x this person mr x he is basically of india but he went to abroad to complete his foreign studies he wanted to do his masters in the foreign country so he went to foreign country to do masters there and in the foreign country he studied there for two years and after two years he came back to india now in that two years time he would have purchased so many items in foreign country obviously and while coming back to india after two years he'll come back with so many articles now some articles could be new items some articles could be already used items so in baggage lot of times there can be used items and for that used items valuation is very important and generally valuation is done by the customs officer on the basis of best judgment assessment that is why generally valuation is done on the basis of best judgment internet prices cannot be the basis for valuation for example sir if Shivateja wants to buy one cell phone, let's say I want to buy one Samsung phone. I went to one store, I went to one cell phone shop and I asked him what is the price. He told, sir, the cell phone price is 55,000. I told, sir, why 55,000? Online in Amazon, Flipkart, it is showing 52,000 only. What that person will tell? Sir, if online is 52,000, our price is 55 only. If you want, you go and buy online only. Obviously, sir. He has put up one shop, he is giving customer service, he is giving some support, he has got some staff. So all that cost he will recover from the customer. So you can't start arguing telling that online it is 52, why do you want 55? He will start telling then buy online only. So internet prices cannot be the basis for valuation. Second situation sir, on that goods, on that foreign goods, sometimes you will also have, on that foreign goods, you will also have price tax what you will have price tax will be there on that goods even that is not relevant for us why because sir price tag on the goods is for sale in the foreign country but not for import to india so at what value this man purchased we don't know correct right we always interpret that internet prices cannot be basis for valuation price tax on the goods cannot be the basis for valuation 
So generally, valuation is done on the basis of best judgment. That is the story of section 77 and 78. 77 says, every international passenger must fill a form called baggage declaration form. And 78 says, the rate of duty and value shall be considered as on the date of declaration. Now, next section, my dear friends, 79. 79 says, simple point, bona fide baggage. What baggage? Bona fide baggage. Bona fide means what? The genuine baggage. Bona fide baggage is exempt from duty, subject to the limits given by rules and the conditions specified by rules. I repeat one more time, friends. 79 says, bona fide baggage is exempt from duty, subject to the limits and the conditions given by rules. So let me tell you very clearly, friends, for the purpose of baggage, we have got baggage rules 2016, which clearly talks about in which case, how much baggage is exempt, how much is dutiable, which we'll talk very much in detail. Are we clear so far? Fantastic. So what is 77? 77 talks about baggage declaration form. 78 talks about rate of duty and value shall be considered on the date of declaration. 79 says bona fide baggage is exempt from duty subject to the limits and the conditions given under rules. That also we'll talk in detail. So we'll talk the, all the rules in detail. Don't worry. So friends, come on. So before I get into the baggage rules 2016, first let me tell you my dear friends that whenever a passenger is coming to India, when he's coming along with some items or articles along with him to India, he is required to pay the duty subject to some limit of exemption. Now the point is, when Prakash is coming back to India, Prakash and his wife both are coming to India. Correct, right? Now, law clearly told that if both of them want separate exemption, if husband and wife both of them want separate exemption, then both of them should definitely fill separate baggage declaration form. I repeat one more time. If husband and wife both of them want separate exemption, then both of them should separately fill a baggage declaration form. So separate exemption will come only when baggage declaration form is filled separately. That is very important. Now my dear friends, let's start with discussion about the baggage rules 2016. Now the first rule my dear friends, let me talk about rule 3 directly. Now you will ask once, why not rule 1 and rule 2? What is this directly going to rule 3 sir? Sir rule 1 only talks about scope of that rules, which only says that rule applies to whole of India. Any act, first section is always the title, extent, commencement and second section is always the definitions. So rule 2 is definitions. That's why I'm directly talking about rule 3 sir. Rule 3 applies to any person who is coming from any country other than Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar. I repeat one more time friends. Rule 3 applies to a person coming from any country other than Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar. Then you will ask one doubt, sir, what mistake Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar? And we know that Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar are neighboring countries to India. And law told, in case of Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, we have got one separate rule called Rule 4. So Rule 3 will apply to a person coming from any country other than Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar. And if a person is coming from Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, then Rule 4 will apply. Clear my dear friends? Now the exemption limit is different in Rule 3 and different in Rule 4. So it is important that you get clarity of thought on this Rule 3 and Rule 4. Where is the difference? Now I'll divide this rule 3 into two categories. Now I'll divide the rule 3 into two categories. The two categories are number one, Indian resident or foreigner residing in India or a tourist of Indian origin. I repeat one more time. First category is Indian resident or foreigner residing in India or tourist of Indian origin. Second category is tourist of foreign origin. So friends, one more time I repeat, first category is Indian resident, foreigner residing in India or tourist of Indian origin. Second category, tourist of foreign origin. Now what difference it makes between these two categories? 
let's understand them very clearly sir so what law told is that in case of indian resident foreigner residing in india or a tourist of indian origin first of all who is a indian resident let me tell you very clearly sir rule 2 defines who is indian resident which says that indian resident is somebody who has got a valid passport issued under passports act indian resident is somebody who has got a valid passport issued under indian passports act so first category is what indian resident or a foreigner residing in india or a tourist of indian origin now question is who is a tourist let me tell you my dear friends this word tourist is also defined by rule 2 which says that tourist means any person who is not normally resident in india tourist means any person who is not normally resident in india but he has come to india but he has come to india for a stay of not more than 6 months he has come to india for a stay of not more than 6 months for legitimate non immigrant purpose sir legitimate means legal non immigrant means he is not shifting he is coming only for a temporary purpose maybe for some business purpose or vacation purpose so tourist means any person who is not normally resident in india but who has come to india for a stay of not more than 6 months for a stay of not more than 6 months for legitimate non immigrant purpose so first category talks about indian resident foreigner residing in india or a tourist of indian origin and generally this word indian origin is not defined there but let me tell you generally whom we say as a person of indian origin that is somebody who or his parents that person or his parents or any of his grandparents were born in undivided india undivided india means before 1947 so if himself or any of his parents or any of his grandparents were born in undivided india then we will call that person as person of indian origin getting clarity right wonderful so friends rule 3 applies to any person coming from any country other than nepal bhutan and in that again two categories first category indian resident foreigner residing in india or a tourist of indian origin second category tourist of foreign origin and why i am dividing like that because in both the cases exemption is different clear right so first let me talk about exemption in first category that is indian resident foreigner residing in india or tourist of indian origin for him the exemption is basically for used personal effects used personal effect and travel souvenirs used personal effect and travel souvenirs and also articles up to a value of 50000 50050000 other than those mentioned in annex 1 so friends i repeat one more time what i wrote there see that come on so exemption is basically for used personal effects number 1 used personal effect and travel souvenirs number 2 articles up to a value of 50000 50050000 other than those mentioned in annex 1 that means this 50000 limit will not apply to annex 1 items now what are annex 1 items we'll talk in detail don't worry clear right come on listen so what is the exemption my dear friends used personal effects now first question is what is the meaning of this word called used personal effects let me tell you personal effect word is defined in rule 2 so let me tell you what is that now rule 2 clearly says personal effects means things required for satisfying daily necessities but does not include jewelry now what are daily necessities nothing but clothes clothes or shivathe just case spectacles or maybe some shoes or any other articles which are required for daily necessities now you should not tell sir i brought one car car is my daily necessity you can't tell like that because i already taught you that baggage includes unaccompanied baggage but does not include motor vehicle now you can't tell whatever you want as daily necessity 
some of them might tell for me bmw car is necessary some of them might tell bmw car is wow it's a luxury for me correct right so whether a particular article is a necessity or luxury is a pure judgmental but as such strictly speaking necessity articles are what food clothing shelter that's what we say correct right that is a basic understanding what we always have correct right so now don't worry in exam in question only they will tell whether it is personal effect or not while solving the question i will show you very clearly that in question they will tell personal effects so i am so value but that too it must be used personal effect not new clothes used clothes correct right come on so exemption is for what number one used personal effect and travel souvenirs now what is a travel souvenir so travel souvenir is something like when we go to foreign country we might get foreign maps or when people go to singapore they get that lion symbol lion symbol is a symbol which is very popular in singapore and when people go to malaysia they get small articles of the malaysian twin towers when people go to paris they get the symbols of eiffel tower and when people who come to india they'll take small small articles of taj mahal and go to foreign country back correct right it's a symbolic of that country that is why it is called as travel souvenirs clear friends come on exemption is for what used personal effect and travel souvenirs and articles up to a value of 50000 50000 other than those mentioned in annex 1 that means for annex 1 items the limit of 50000 will not apply now what is annex 1 we'll talk in detail soon don't worry at all next so that story is basically for indian resident foreigner residing in india or a tourist of indian origin other side for a tourist of foreign origin story is almost the same now let me tell you what is the story for tourist of foreign origin the exemption is basically for used personal effect exemption is basically for used personal effect and travel souvenirs and articles up to a value of 15,015, not 50, 15,000, other than those mentioned in Annex 1. That means that 15,000 limit will not apply for items given under Annex 1. Now, what is Annex 1? We will talk in detail. So, if you observe carefully, for Indian resident, foreigner residing in India, tourist of Indian origin, they gave a limit of 50,000. But for tourist of foreign origin, the limit is only 15,000, 1, 5, 15,000. Clear, right? Now, rule 3 applies to any person coming from other than Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar. Now, when I say any person, that person is somebody who is other than infant. Person is somebody who is other than infant. Now, who is an infant? Infant is a small baby. Now, what is the meaning of this word called small baby? They define in the law. Rule 2 says infant means a person whose age does not exceed 2 years. Infant means a child who is not more than 2 years of age. For that infant also, again you should not tell I want 50,000 exemption. No, 50,000 exemption is not given for an infant. For an infant, exemption is only for used personal effects. Basically, for infants, what will be there? The milk bottles, the milk bottles or clothes or any other articles related to that infant. Correct, right? So, basically, for infant, exemption is only for used personal effects. Clear? Wonderful. So, what is the summary, my dear friends? Rule 3 has got two categories. Indian resident, foreigner residing in India or tourist of Indian origin. Other category, tourist of foreign origin. For Indian resident, foreigner residing in India, tourist of Indian origin. What is the exemption? Used personal effect and travel souvenirs and articles up to a value of 50,000 other than those mentioned in Annex 1. Now, tourist of foreign origin, used personal effect and travel souvenirs and articles up to a value of 15,000, 15,000 other than those mentioned in Annex 1. Now, what is covered in Annex 1? We will talk in detail. Don't worry. Now, this articles of 50,000, whatever I am talking, that articles could be either carried in person or carried in the baggage. 
that means the articles might be in luggage or the person is only wearing that articles the person is only wearing that articles so articles may be carried on by the person or may be in the baggage of that person for example sir when a person is going to dubai he might buy some gold articles gold chain gold ring and all that he will not carry in the baggage he will only wear and come that is also baggage only baggage necessarily doesn't mean only in luggage he is wearing that is also possible that is also baggage clear friends so now let's talk about what are the points covered in annex 1 for which exemption limits will not apply so friends let me explain to you very clearly what are the articles which are covered under annex 1 now it is very important to understand about the articles covered in annex 1 because for the articles covered in annex 1 we can't take that benefit of 50,000 or 15,000 generally we call that 50,000 or 15,000 as GFA where GFA stands for general free allowance and let me tell you very clearly that general free allowance is basically 50,000 for Indian resident, foreigner residing in India or for tourist of Indian origin and for tourist of foreign origin the GFA limit is 15,000 rupees but one point to be noted and kept in mind is that this GFA limit will not apply for articles covered under Annex 1. Now what are those articles which are covered under Annex 1? And let me tell you my dear friends, there are totally 6 items which are covered under Annex 1. Number 1, firearms and firearms basically means the guns or revolvers AK-47 firearms. Number 2, cartridges of firearms exceeding 50 this point is very important i should definitely elaborate this point so first point is what firearms second point is what cartridges of firearms exceeding 50 now let's say my dear friends i'll give an example so that you get a complete clarity of thought on the story of cartridges of firearms exceeding 50 sir let's say there is one person called mr prakash who is an Indian resident. He went to foreign country and while coming back to India, he has got 60 cartridges. How many cartridges he has brought? 60 cartridges of 800 rupees each. He got 60 cartridges of 800 rupees each. He has not got any other article. The only thing what he brought is 60 cartridges of 800 rupees each. Now, one thing very clearly you have to understand is that in Annex 1, second point says cartridges of firearms exceeding 50. That means what? Up to 50, up to 50 can be considered for GFA. Whatever is over and above 50, that is only not considered for GFA. But up to 50 can be considered for GFA, my dear friends. Now, what does that mean? He brought 60 cartridges. I will bifurcate the 60 cartridges into 50 cartridges one side, 10 cartridges one side. Because for this 50 cartridges, I can take the general free allowance. But other side, the 10 cartridges is basically annexure one item on which I cannot take general free allowance. That means I should pay duty on that. I should pay duty on that. What rate you will pay, we will talk separately. Don't worry. Don't worry. But I should pay duty on that. Clear, right? Come on now. So 50 cartridges of 800 rupees each. What is the value, sir? 50 cartridges of 800 each comes to 40,000. And the general free allowance, what Mahesh has got is 50,000. So Mahesh will not pay duty on the 50 cartridges. But for the balance 10 cartridges, which is nothing but an extra one item, Mahesh should pay the customs duty. What rate he will pay, we will talk in detail. Don't worry. Getting clarity, right? So you have to understand that second point says cartridges of firearms exceeding 50. That means whatever is over and above 50, that is only covered under Annex 1. Up to 50 can be considered for GFA. GFA is nothing but general free allowance, which could be 50,000 or it could be 15,000. Depends upon type of category. 
What is the story, sir? Our next gentleman, there are totally six items. Number one, firearms. Number two, cartridges of firearms exceeding 50. Number three, cigarettes. Cigarettes exceeding 100 sticks or cigars exceeding 25. Sir, cigars means the thick bound one which will come. The thick one, it's basically like cigarette only, but the thick bound one, it is called as cigars. Cigarettes exceeding 100 sticks or cigars exceeding 25 or tobacco exceeding 125 grams. Cigarette exceeding 100 sticks or cigars exceeding 25 or tobacco exceeding 125 grams. And since I'm telling exceeding, 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 sir, let's say the same person, he brought 120 cigarettes. If 120 cigarettes are brought, 100 can be considered for general free allowance. But over and above 100, which is nothing but 20 cigarettes, that 20 cigarettes is called as annexure one item. And for annexure one item, we can't take the benefit of general free allowance. So what are the three points I told so far? Number one, firearms. Number two, cartridges of firearms exceeding 50. Number three, cigarettes exceeding 100 sticks or cigars exceeding 25 or tobacco exceeding 125 grams. Now let me tell you an interesting point, my dear friends. For the first three points of annexure one, the rate of duty of baggage will not apply. And we have got a special rate and the special rate is nothing but 100%. The rate of duty is 100%. Of course, on that 100%, again there is 10% social welfare surcharge. That's nothing but they'll pay the duty at the rate of 110%. For example, when 120 cigarettes are brought, 100 cigarettes are considered for GFA, general free allowance. And over and above 100 is nothing but what? 20 cigarettes. On that 20 cigarettes, he should pay duty at the rate of 110%, sir. Very, very dangerous because they are covered in annexure 1. And annexure 1, there are got 6 points. And in that 6 points, for the first 3 points, the rate of duty is 100%. Plus, social welfare surcharge, 10%. Effectively, 110%. Friends, to give you more sense of clarity on this 110% rate, let me give a wonderful example, sir. Let's say he went to foreign country and while coming back to India, he has got 120 cigarettes of 600 rupees each. He did not get anything, my dear friends. He got only 120 cigarettes of 600 each, my dear friends. How much is the price, sir? 120 cigarettes of 600 each. That's it. He did not get anything else, my dear friends. He got 120 cigarettes of 600 each. Now, how will I do the calculation? First, I'll bifurcate. This 120 cigarettes into 100 cigarettes and 20 cigarettes. This 20 cigarettes will become an extra one item. 100 cigarettes will be separately taken because they are considered for GFA. Now on 100 cigarettes multiplied by 600 will become 60,000. And from that 60,000, I will take general free allowance of 50,000. And on the balance 10,000, I will pay duty at the baggage rate which is nothing but 38.5%. 10,000 into 38.5%. But other side, for this 20 cigarettes, which are an extra one item, 20 cigarettes into 600 per cigarette will come to 12,000. On that 12,000, he should pay duty at the rate of 110%. So I'm sure we are getting full clarity of thought on how do you have to bifurcate. The reason being that out of that 120 cigarettes, 100 cigarettes can be considered for GFA and 20 cigarettes is annexure 1. For annexure 1 items, we can't take GFA and in annexure 1, there are 6 items of which first 3 items, the duty rate is 110% and first 3 are nothing but firearms, cartridges of firearms exceeding 50, third one, cigarettes exceeding 100 sticks, cigars exceeding 25 or tobacco exceeding 125 grams. For these three points, the rate of duty is 110%. That is why when the person has brought 120 cigarettes, we will bifurcate as 100 cigarettes, 20 cigarettes. For 100, we will consider them for GFA. 60,000 minus 50,000, 10,000, 38.5%. But for this 20 cigarettes into 600, 12,000, they are an extra one item. 
So on that we will pay duty at the rate of 110%. So on exercise 1, 3 points done. Number 1, firearms. Number 2, cartridges of firearms exceeding 50. Number 3, cigarettes exceeding 100 sticks or cigars exceeding 25 or tobacco exceeding 125 grams. And for these 3 points, the rate of duty is 110%. Now, fourth point my dear friends, alcoholic liquor alcohol liquor or wine in excess of two liters so people who generally go to foreign country they have got too much of fascination while coming back to india they get foreign liquor and law told if you get more than two liters of the liquor whatever is excess of two liters it is regarded as an extra one item so for example if we get three liters of alcohol liquor we will bifurcate them into two liters and one liter that 2 liters can be considered for GFA and 1 liter becomes an extra 1 item. So alcohol, liquor or wine in excess of 2 liters. Generally people don't get more than 2 liters at all because they don't allow in the airport to bring more than 2 liters. That's not possible also. That is practical reality. Clear? Come on. So what is the fourth point? Alcohol, liquor or wine in excess of 2 liters. Fifth point my dear friends. Gold or silver gold or silver in any form other than ornaments gold or silver in any form other than ornaments now what does that mean any form what can be that word any form other than ornaments any form basically means gold coins or gold biscuits the raw form of gold gold or silver in any form other than ornaments so if it is ornaments let's say gold ring gold chain gold bracelet then you can take the limit of GFA because it is not an extra one. Correct, right? So ultimately, why I am taking all this effort to only to explain you that that 50,000 limit or the 15,000 limit, other words, that general free allowance limit will not apply for the items covered under an extra one. And what is that, my dear friends? What is the fourth point? Alcohol, liquor or wine in excess of two liters. Fifth one gold or silver in any form other than ornaments and last one my dear friends flat panel television flat television lcd led or plasma once upon a time people used to be fit and tvs used to be fat but nowadays situation is becoming reverse the tvs are very much fit and flat and people are becoming fat that's a problem but all set and done. Sixth point says flat panel television, LCD, LED, plasma. Clear, right? So these are the six points covered in Annex Year 1. And one last point I will tell to complete Annex Year 1 is that in Annex Year 1, as we know, there are six points. And for first three points, what is the rate of duty, sir? The rate of duty is 110%. But let me tell you, for the last three points, that is alcohol, liquor or wine in excess of 2 liters, gold or silver in any form other than ornaments. Last one, flat panel television. For this last three points, the rate of duty is not 110%. The rate of duty is baggage rate only. That means 38.5%. So let's say when Mahesh went to foreign country, while coming back to India, he brings one LED TV. On that LED TV, Mahesh will pay duty at the rate of 38.5%. Don't worry, it's not 110%. 110% is only for first three items in Annex 1 and for next three items it is 38.5%. That means the rate of duty of baggage only will apply. This is what is the interesting story of Annex 1.